that has brought a lot of um a, a, a lot of um scrutiny especially as far as the body of christ is concerned spirituality is genuine and spirituality is so real it is so delegate to a place where each and everybody as you have been created by god you have to understand the spiritual being of yourself in order for you to live a life that is fulfilling or in order for you to come to a place where your spiritual life is um is complete now the reason why you see us as believers continually going back or referring back to spirituality is that the essence of our beings is derived or the essence of our beings has been extracted from the realm of the spirit it is impossible for anyone to talk about the spirit without talking about where man comes from one of the things that you will realize as a child of God is uh, even as a mere human being, when you are building a house, every house that is built, every house is built from the foundation. And as people build the house, you go up with the walls, the window frames, and until you reach to a place where you put them the roofing all right which is that makes the house complete uh in which people can in dwell into and even after you would have built your house and the walls are standing you still need to make sure that you finish the house so that the house can be inhabitable or so that the house can be comfortable for people to live in am i communicating to somebody so when we talk about the spirit it's a very sensitive issue because a lot of people who tag or who proclaim to be spiritual have not yet reached that height of spirituality in which they can come to a place where they can um where they can legislate the spiritual things they talk about or where they can come to that position of even opening up to others about the realities of the spirit now as as you look at yourself you understand as we are getting into introduction and we are beginning that from the creation there are things that happen in that event of the creation that are still to be explained as far as men are concerned which brings us to where we are and it has to alert us of what we should take into consideration what we should improve and what we should also come to a place that we should eliminate all right i want you to just uh quickly take your bibles i want you to quickly take your bibles um quickly take your bibles to the book of genesis all right to the book of genesis i want you to quickly take your bibles to the book of genesis my goodness pala kapala gabredi kapa yande kapala bradakai quickly take your bibles to the book of genesis chapter number two all right genesis chapter number two all right genesis chapter number two understanding spirituality all right all right so genesis chapter number two from verse eight genesis chapter number two from verse eight now the bible the bible explains to us that then god formed the created that is created the body of a man from the dust all right and god formed and created um the body of a man out of the dust he formed and created the body of a man out of 
the dust, all right? He formed and created the body of a man out of the dust. Look at your neighbor and say, God formed and created the body of a man out of the dust, all right? So God created and formed the body of a man out of the dust. Praise God. God formed and created the body of a man out of the dust. And when he formed, the Bible says that in the in exhausting his creation or in finishing his creation, when he created the body of, of, of a man out of the dust, the Bible says, and he breathed in, into his nostrils the breath of life. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being, an individual, complete in body and in spirit. All right, let us go to First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. All right. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. My good God. All right. So, so the Bible says that, and God created a man. You have to understand as we are talking about the spirituality because remember Adam was the first being and we have to understand from the foundations of how that Adam came to be if we are to understand even ourselves and how we are to operate and ought to to, to, to operate as, as, as being as we are. So the Bible says when God, when God had created this, um, this, uh, this Adam, the Bible says he created the body. All right. So we want to understand the infrastructure of the man so that we can be able to, we can be able to to explain the depth of how do we come to that place where we become these spirit beings that we are now, all right? These spirit beings that we are now. So the Bible says, and when God created, what happened is in God's creation, all right? So in Genesis, in creation, all right? In creation, the Bible says, there are things that are explained there. The Bible says, and God created the body. All right? The body which was created out of dust. This body was created out of dust. And the Bible says, after this body was created out of dust, God had to bring out a certain raw material out of himself. All right? What was that raw material? In creation, all right. The Bible says, and the very same God, the very same God, then He breathed His Spirit, all right. Breathed, all right. The He breathed what was called the breath of life. All right, so God breathed the breath of life, and this now brought men to a formation where when you read in that very same Genesis, the Bible says, and the man became a living being, or the man became a living soul. So this aspect brought men to become a living, all right, brought men to become a living soul. This, these two things, they constituted in a man becoming a living soul. So in God creating man, he created the body, then he breathed his spirit. And the Bible says the man became a living soul. So there is a lot to explain because just on this, there is a lot of spirituality that is just on this matter to say there has to be a separation. All right? There has to be a separation. All right? So, 
the separation now it explains it, 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 it explains to us that in this aspect these three things we have explained them in 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 many times we have explained them joining them up but it shows from this explanation that we can join these things all right we can join these things because the bible shows us that there was the body all right and there was the spirit all right and the body and the spirit these two when they joined they brought out the soul when the body and the spirit met they brought out the soul so when god joined the body and the spirit that is when the soul came into being all right that is when the soul came into being and this is one of the places where we have a lot of confusion as far as men are concerned we have a lot of confusion as far as spirituality is concerned why because why because this becomes the bridge of men am i communicating to somebody am i communicating to somebody so when 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 you see yourself you see everything about yourself it is centered among this point of the soul all right so we are going to explain that aspect of the soul so that we gain understanding of what we are talking about so that we gain understanding of what we are talking about so god breathed god built the body and the spirit is him part of him that he was to impart into men the spirit is the technology or the software all right and when 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 these two met the bible says they became a man now that's when men came to being that is when you came to be alive so what is this about the soul that has brought so much confusion as far as humanity is concerned what is this about the soul that has brought so much confusion as far as people are concerned praise god praise the name of the living god my goodness i also want to understand what is this about the living soul what is this about the living soul all right all right so this is what we have to explain when we talk about the soul now the soul breaks down that aspect of a man in which you have now to understand how to you have now to to to, to get to a place where you understand how to um how to be able to operate in the spirit before you get into visions before you get into dreams you have to master the concept of the 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 the, um, the, 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 the body the spirit and the soul all right so as I further explain, I want you to understand that. I want you to look at this as I further explain. Now, when you read your Bible, you would understand that there is in many times where the Bible speaks about the battle between the flesh and the spirit. And also, even when you hear David praise, David prays, and in his prayer he says, Your word is a hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. All right? Now, you have to differentiate these things because in many cases, there is a lot of misconception that people have done. All right? Now, we have three things that have been mentioned here that we are going to explain as we go forth. The first thing that God created was the body. All right? The first thing that God created was the body. All right? That is the first thing that God created and when the body was created because god wanted the man to walk now the body composes of the structure all right body parts all right in this structure we talk about bones 
you are going to understand why I'm explaining this. Uh, we, we talk about bones in this structure. We talk about vessels. Blood. Vessels. All right? In this structure, we talk about blood. Vessels. All right. We talk about blood vessels. Now, when God created the body, he went on further. The Bible says that he went on further to breathe his spirit into the body. The spirit was the one that gave life to the body. All right? So, the body was given life by the spirit. which is Zoe, or which is the breath of life. So, now many people tend to confuse this. This is the body. And we all know that um, a human being is made up of the body, spirit, and soul. The human, the human being is made up of the body, the spirit, and the soul. The human being is made up of the body, the spirit, and the soul. And all these have got to be explained, their functionalities, as far as man is concerned. Uh, what is the body? What is the spirit? And what is the soul? What is the body? What is the spirit? And what is the soul? Now, I'm going to explain in terms, especially as I said that today, I want to touch on the aspect of the soul, even as we get into scriptures. All right? Even as we get into scriptures. Now, so the body, the spirit, and the soul. The body, the spirit, and the soul. All right? So, I'm going to bring us to just a simple diagram so that we can understand this aspect or this analogy that I'm talking about. All right. So when we have the body here, we have the body right there. And as far as we have the body, all right, after this aspect of the body, the next thing that we have is the, is the soul. You have this body. Then from the body, the body connects to the what? To the soul. From the body, the body connects to the soul. Right here. The body connects to the soul. And... The soul is divided, all right, into three. The soul is divided into three. How is it divided? The soul is divided into the mind, the will, and emotions. Now, already to, to, to somebody who is attentive already, they are already seeing where most of our confusion comes as maybe believers and as, as children of God. Now, from this aspect now, we, we have now the bigger connection that brings us to the spirit. Which, which in communication, we always say that when we talk about the spirit, we are talking about you. All right, when we talk about the spirit. So, you would then begin to understand something that many people, many people, what they have failed to realize or what they failed to understand in as far as our growth, our spirituality, and our, uh, our, our, our infrastructural matter in which God created us into. The body was created so that it can inhabit body parts. All right? 
Now, on the body part of the body, uh, we have um, we have uh, eyes, ears, um, eyes, ears, tongue. We have hands, uh, and so forth and so forth, certain body parts that you understand and all. And in as much as we have all these things, it brings you to an understanding that the body in all these things, it is what we call senses. It is what we call senses, the body. The spirit also now, the spirit also has also its own spiritual senses. The spirit, it has its spiritual senses. So the body and the spirit, the body, your body and your spirit, the difference is for you to reach the body, all right, I had left out something. The body has the brain. Now, I want you to see the difference. For you to come to a place where you will reach the body, from the body to the spirit, you have to go through, you have to go through the process of, you have to go through the process of the soul. You cannot go to the straight from the spirit and the body without the soul. Why? Because in the soul, that is when we have, um, in most cases, um, the processing. All right? Unit, or you can call it a CPU if you can. In the soul, that is when we have the processing. Why? Because we have emotions. We have the mind and we have the will. So most of most of the most of the the most of the the problems that has happened to believers, it is on the aspect of the soul. All right? The soul can be a hindrance. All right. The soul can be a hindrance because you have emotions, you have the mind, and you have the will. Now, when you have all these things, emotions, the mind, and the will, how do they come to a place where they can limit you as a person? How do they come to a place where they can limit you as a person? All right. The, the, the body is the brain. Now, when you read your Bible, I want you to take your Bibles right now to the book of Romans. All right? I want you to take your Bible to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Praise God. Romans 12. All right. My goodness, my goodness. All right. In Romans chapter 12, we'll read uh, verse 1 to 2. All right. So Apostle Paul comes to a place where he addresses both the aspects. Um, he, he addresses both the aspects of the things that I am uh, communicating about. All right. So he says, my brothers and sisters, therefore, by the message of God, present your bodies, dedicating all yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing unto God, for this is your reasonable service. So Apostle Paul speaks about the body, the body uh, being what? Uh, being sacrificed. All right? 
which in other terms, if we are talking about this, we are talking about discipline. All right? We are talking about discipline. We are talking about discipline. And he went on further to explain on that aspect, and he, and he said on verse number two, and do not be conformed to the things of this world any longer with superficial values and customs, but be transformed, progressively changed as a nature of, um, a, a, a changed as you mature in spiritual maturity by renewing your mind, all right? So he speaks about the mind. All right, he speaks about the mind and he said it has to be renewed. He speaks about the mind and he says it has to be renewed. Remember, we are talking about the aspect of the body. All right, the body, the spirit. And the soul. They're talking about the body, the spirit, and the soul. So he explains and he says the body has to be sacrificed. There has to be discipline. That is where you see in this area we speak on aspects like um, fasting. As a necessity, all right? Then, when we talk about renewal, we are communicating about information. In which you are going to look at Adam, how he was affected with this, with this whole process. So, he, say, he says that your mind has got to be renewed so that you are not transformed. And there is a point that I love that I just want to note right there when he says, when your mind has been renewed, when your mind has been renewed, he says that when your mind has been renewed, uh, in verse number two, he says that when you are transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually, all right? So the apostle notes to us that, uh, this renewal of your mind is a sign that you are going through a process of spiritual maturity. I believe this is more understandable as I'm trying to explain in a way that we all get. So if the soul is not controlled, all right, if this soul If, if this soul is uncontrolled, it will bring forth what you call destruction. If your soul is not controlled, if your soul is not tamed, if your soul is not trained, you have to come to a place where you begin to deal with a way where you train your soul if you want to grow in this spiritual maturity. All right, so that is much of the differentiation. So he spoke and he said that your body has got to be disciplined. And your mind has got to be renewed. It has got to be renewed. When you read your Bible, what made Adam and Eve to fail you was information. It was information. So David comes to a place where he prays to God in a prayer. And, and I love his prayer. All right? I love his prayer. I love David's prayer. If, if, if you read your Bible, I want you to take your Bibles right now to the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 11. 119, verse 11. All right? In Psalms 119, verse 11. Psalms 119, verse number 11. Praise God. My God, I love spiritual realities. I love spiritual realities. So, Psalms... 119, verse 11. What does the Bible say? Your word is a treasure in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So David explains his analogy. He says, your word What did I do with your word? I hid it. Where? In my heart. Oh, 
What are you trying to gain by hiding this word in my heart? David says, the answer to all this is so that I may not sin. Your word is hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against thee. And we explained in, we explained further before that if we are to talk about, if we are to talk about a, a man who is a living soul, if we are to talk about a man who is a living soul, he is made up of what? The soul, the soul is made up of what? The um, emotions, the mind, and the will. All right? It's made up of the emotions, the mind, and the will. Emotions, we all know that when we talk about emotions, we are talking about feelings, which connects back to the body, all right? It will connect back to the body. So all this is intertwined, all right? Why is the mind, why is the mind on the middle? Because when the mind is used to decide things, even when you are to get to a place where you, 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 you are to have your own will to make a decision, in most cases, all these two things are involved, all right? All these two things are involved, the what? The emotion and the will over the mind. So Debbie says, your word is I hidden in my heart. And I've been explaining to you over and over again the issue of the mind and the heart. That interchangeably, the Bible speaks about the mind and the heart. I, the Lord, search it what is in the heart of men. Uh, the spirit of the Lord search it what is in the what? what uh, it is the spirit of a man that search it what is in the heart of God. All right, I'm going, to, I'm going to, to bring it up. So this very same word is also, if you check, they also use this word heart. So in, when you look in Romans, Romans 12, verse 2, all right? The Bible says it has to be renewed. The Bible says it has to be renewed. This, the heart has got to be renewed. When David speaks in Psalms, all right? When David speaks in Psalms, in Psalms, 119 verse 11. What does David say? David says, your word, all right, your word have I hid way in thy heart. So you, you will see now that the soul has been one of the most dangerous things as far as spirituality is concerned. Many people want to walk with God. They want to hear God. They want God to communicate to them through visions and dreams. Some, they want to see open visions. But if this aspect is not dealt with, you will not see yourself come to a place where you have... Um, where you have um where you have uh deep understanding or where you operate in the depth of even the very same spirituality you're talking about all right it will be difficult because the very same thing if we are to talk about the emotions the emotions that's where we have feelings but it does not end there we have the mind we have the will in the will, that's where we see decisions. All right? That's where we, we see decisions. That's where we see decisions. The, 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 you have to understand now, this very same mind is connected to the what? To the brain. The brain is not the mind. All right? The brain is not the mind. The brain has parts that 
operate as far as the body is concerned that to explain as far as the body is concerned when you are now talking about body parts if you are to talk about eyesight and all that connection but what brings men to believing what brings men to be making decisions what brings men to have precision what brings men to have a perception it is the mind the soul so this soul has been a hindrance and if well dealt with in mostly through the word this soul can be tamed by the word it can be tamed by the word the heart it's hard many times you can't even control your heart you can't even control your mind sometimes you see yourself thinking over things you don't want to think about that is the mind there's something with emotions sometimes you see yourself having emotions now imagine let me just give an example uh, of the prophetic all right the prophetic imagine god has spoken a message all right so we can say a message a message this is a message that would have come obviously uh when a message come we all know that they are we, we all know that if they are coming if we are talking about a message from the spirit all right it's um it's either it's god or satan if a message is coming from the spirit he said that it's god or satan under satan you can put demons All right, it said that it's God or it's Satan. When a message has been brought, or when a message is being brought forth, or God is speaking a message, it said that God is Satan. Now, imagine God has spoken a message, and in as much as God has brought forth a message to you, when that message is being spoken, there is a process in which obviously that message has to go through. Now, Imagine when one has, one has, a, God has spoken a message, and the message is being spoken to a corrupted soul. I want you to just look at it, a corrupted soul. A corrupted soul will mean that even the emotions towards it, they are not genuine. They are not genuine. They, they, they are not in right senses. It means this message, all right, this message, is, if it's under a, corrupt, a, a corrupted soul, it means this message will also be corrupted. Corrupted message. This one. It will become corrupted. Why? Because the soul is corrupted. You can never put water in a dirty cup and the water will be clean. All right? That is why when you read your Bible, the Bible speaks to us. I want you to go to the book of, uh, to the book of uh, John. All right? All right? I want you to go to the book of John right now. All right. The book of John. John chapter number 17, verse 17. If you are there, just uh, where up there? John 17, verse 17. John 17, verse 17. Praise God. John 17, verse 17. All right. So, what does it say? John 17, 17. The Bible says, Sanctify sanctify them in the truth and set them apart for your purpose make them holy for thy word is truth so uh, the word all right the word cleans so if the word can make pure it means if the word of god you have, if you can Feed your body with the word, like what is being said here in the book of Romans, right here. What will happen is that this soul will become clean. This soul will become clean. 
And when the soul becomes clean, it's easy for you to operate in the spirit. It's easy for you that when God speaks, the message that he speaks, you can deliver it accurately. But if this soul is corrupted, if your soul is corrupted, it will be difficult for you to deliver a pure message. So we have explained as we have gone through scriptures that as a child of God, you need to come to a place where as you grow in the spirit, as you grow in the things of God, as you grow, uh, as you grow in understanding the aspect of that analogy, understanding yourself is far more important. So you have to deal with the emotions, the mind, and the will. When those three things are dealt with, because the soul is the one that is on the middle, that when, when, when a message has been spoken from the spirit, remember it has to be actualized or to function on the board. It's a prophetic word. It's spoken in the spirit. It has gone into the, uh, into the maybe hard drive of the spirit. Let's say hard drive of the spirit. Or it has gone to the memory of the spirit. For you to prophesy that word, it's not your spirit that will go and prophesy. That is why you see people can see visions. And actually feel, if you have ever been at a place where you say, but optically, I feel like there's a vision that is coming. You can feel when that message is in the memory of the spirit and it, it, it wants to show itself so that you can actually have the actual spiritual reality of it. You can feel even your eyes will be like itching to say, there is a vision, there is a vision. But it seems as if the vision is not clear. Why? Because the bridge between that body and the spirit is the soul. So the, your mind, if it cannot contextualize, it's impossible. If it cannot contextualize, it's impossible. That is why the Bible says that we prophesy according to the level of our faith. What is the level of our faith? What is the level of our faith? The Bible says that faith comes by uh, faith by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So the more the information, the more our dimension and the horizon of our faith is expanded. So you can only come to a place where you can actualize certain realities according to what you are exposed to. So you see someone, I remember there's a time, I'll just speak to this as, 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 as we do this, uh, our, first, our first lesson. I, I remember at a time when, um, when God showed me a vision. Just like he did to, if you know the man called, uh, the man called Daniel. Daniel saw helicopters in the future. And Daniel said, I saw grasshoppers. Because his exposure was not yet at the horizon of understanding these machines. So what he saw was just a ship, which was a helicopter. Am I going to get into someone? So certain deep things are not opened up to people because even if God drops that word in your spirit, it's hard for you to understand. It's hard for there to be a communication between your spirit and your soul. I, I always tell people that if you want to understand spiritually, there is an aspect that I've seen. If you can go, if you can be a person who's technical, if you can be a person who's technical, when you look at your phone, if you put a very big application in your phone, when you try to open that up, it will flash and your screen will go white and the app will not open. Why? Because the app is bigger than the horizon or the processing of the gadget. Uh, am I communicating to somebody? The processing of the gadget. So that is what we'll be talking about in our next lesson. That is what we'll be communicating about in our next lesson.